Good morning and welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church in Poughkeepsie, New York, and our virtual worship series. This worship video is for Sunday, June 7th, 2020, and it is for Trinity Sunday. So we have a, a little bit of a special worship prepared for you this morning. We have some voices and some acolytes and a festival worship. So we're very excited to bring this to you this morning and hope you enjoy it. So in the meantime, let's frame our hearts and minds before God as we prepare to worship him this morning. Trusting in Christ's great promise of forgiveness, let us now turn our hearts toward God in humble confession. 
Eternal God, our Creator, you are our breath and our very life. We are the work of your hands, the children of your creation. We confess that we have often turned from you and sought our own path through life. Forgive us our offenses and cleanse us from proud thoughts and empty desires. By your grace, draw us near to you, that you may be our refuge and our strength. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even while we were still far away and has given us new life through our Lord Jesus Christ. By grace you have been saved, and in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, God now forgives you all your sins. Amen. Let us pray. God of heaven and earth, before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of time, you are the triune God, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us to all truth by your spirit, that we may proclaim all that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory he shares with us. Glory and praise to you, 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for today is found in Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You whose glory is chanted above the heavens, out of the mouths of infants and children. You have set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the fall and the venture. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, you have set in their courses. What are mere mortals that you should mind, be mindful of them? Human beings that you should care for them? Yet you have made them little less than the mark. With glory and honor, you crown them. You have made them rule over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. All flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And today's second reading is found in 2 Corinthians. Paul writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order, listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to you, O Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Remember back in the in the old days, <laughs> the pre-COVID-19 days, when, you, when your kids are actually still in school, and, and how they would come home sometimes with a little craft project that they made, and, and they'd be so proud of it. Um, we were cleaning up around the house, and I came upon one of those little treasures that the kids had made when they were little, and it brought back all kinds of really cool memories. Um, you know, like, <laughs> sometimes they'd come home with a thing, you wouldn't even know exactly what it was. You know, but your kids would be so excited about it and, and explain the whole story behind it. And, and you just knew how much they loved making it and how much they cherished everything they made. It's so cool. Now, in today's psalm, David is reflecting on, on things that were made. He's looking at the book of Genesis and, and the account of God's creation in, in Psalm 8. And, you know, God made the universe. God made the world. And then, then God made people. And David wonders aloud in verse 4, Why? What are, what are mere mortals that you, Lord, should be mindful of us? 
it's a good question. What, what are we? But at the end of the day, nevertheless, whatever we are, recognizable or not, we are made. And even more, we are loved by the one who made us. And why? Just like the kids, because they made us. You know, God made us. The host of heaven thought this through and created humanity and loves us. So now let's fast forward to the gospel where Jesus says, I want you to make something too. He's, so he says, go and make. And, and so we have to ask ourselves with this action word, what will we make? What have you made? If you think about your kids and their treasures and think about God and what God has created, what have you made? And, and do you love all the things that you've made? Even if it didn't turn out to exactly the way you hoped, you know, you still love it nevertheless. What have you made? Um, you know, this, this gospel is full of action words, which we'll get to in a minute. But, you know, couched within all of this is this other action word um, that is faith. Um, and when Jesus says to go make things, he's telling us to do it in faith. So um, what do you make as, as people of faith? Well, as Lutherans, you know, we're, we're, people, of, we're people of relationships and uh, we're people of coffee hours. So one thing we make is coffee. Yes, that's true. <laughs> but, but one the thing we make is really important to us is connections. We make, we make connections with one another, sharing your story with other people, listening to other people's stories. Um, we make friends. We make bridges. We make relationships. What do you make as a person of faith? You make a statement about yourself. You make impressions. You make prayers. You make companions. You make peace. Together, all of you, home or otherwise, you make a congregation. Together, you make the body of Christ. You make other things too. So do you love everything that you make. And do we make all the things we make in God's name? Uh, it, Jesus gets pretty specific in his gospel about what we're supposed to make. So, um, you know, that rest of that sentence, he says, go and make, and then he says, go make disciples. Disciples. How do I make a disciple? Um, well, he gives us a formula, fortunately, because it's tough to make somebody you know, be something. But Jesus says part of the way you make disciples is through this other action word, this other verb that he gives us in the gospel, gospel, and that is baptizing. So he says by baptizing people, literally, that's making disciples. But is baptism all there is to it? If there were, the sentence would end right there. But Jesus continues with a comma, and he says, we're told to make disciples by baptizing them and by teaching them. Well, that's good. We can certainly teach people whatever they need to know. I mean, we teach in Bible study. We teach in Sunday school. We teach in confirmation. We teach people things they need to know about Christ and about faith and, and um, about Lutheranism, uh, or at least we will when we gather again together. Soon enough, we'll be open. We teach um, by example. But is baptizing and teaching still enough? Apparently not, because Jesus continues to direct him in the gospel. And he says, you're supposed to baptize and teach people this one specific thing, which is to understand and obey um, all that he has commanded you. And he literally says that. He says, teach them everything that I've commanded you. Now, that's a pretty tall order because I'm not sure if we can remember all the things that Jesus commanded us and taught us. It's a lot. On the other hand, maybe it's not. Because remember, just before he left the disciples, um, you know, at the Last Supper, at the table, 
Jesus gave them another command and he said, love each other the way I loved you. This is the way the whole world will know that you are my disciples. Everything Jesus ever said and ever did and embodied was all contained in now this one statement. Love each other the way I loved you. And then he says, that is how the world will know that you're my disciples. That's how you make yourself a disciple. Maybe that's how we make other disciples too. Loving each other in relationship, in community. Um, and, and you know what? That is really the purpose of, of baptism. That's the purpose of teaching. That's the purpose of going. That's the purpose of discipleship. That's the purpose of faith. It's, it's the purpose of, of, of Jesus' own ministry. And so for us, um, we need to make ourselves anything. It is to learn to love what God created as much as God loves what God created. Think about that. To love what God created as much as God loves what God created. You know, it's not always easy to love the, the thing that your kid, your child brings home if you can't figure out what it is and you don't understand it, but you respect the story and you respect what they... And so eventually, that little treasure stays on your table forever and ever. And as time goes, you love that thing so much because it embodies your child's creative process. Imagine if you could learn to love all that God created that same way, with the same excitement that God has when God created all this majesty. And that's how the world will know that you are Christ's disciples. So what can you make of all this? Well, we know this. All the teaching in the world all the teaching in the world is nothing without love. All the baptizing in the world is nothing without true abiding love and communal relationship. Even obeying is nothing, Jesus says that himself, without love. So, what will we make with God's work in our hands? What will we make with God's work in our mouths and on our tongues? What can we make with God's work in our feet? What will we make? What will we make of others? What will we make of our society? What are we going to make of ourselves? And, and how in the world are we going to do this? Especially right now, all the tensions that are all around us, um, right this minute, you know, political tension, virus tensions. We have all, all the tensions that are happening nationwide right now for justice. Um, how are we going to make all these wonderful things? Oh, that's right. There's another verb in today's Great Commission in the Gospel. And, and this verb, this verb might just be the most important verb in your whole faith life. It is in the last verse of today's gospel, in the last sentence. And the verb is, remember. Remember, Jesus says, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So all the teaching, all the baptizing, all the going, all the making, all, all the everything is done while we remember that Jesus is with us to the end of the age. But that's also right now, not just the end of the age. Jesus is with you now. I am, he says, the great I am, God, is with you now, all the way to the end of the age. Do we really remember that, though? I mean, that he's with you every minute, every hour, every second? Um, you know, sometimes when someone is with you all the time, you start to take it for granted. You may even forget. Um, you know, or we've been socially isolated for so long, there might be people that you sort of are with too much and you wish you'd have a little separation from them. But, you know, um, the fact is, Jesus is there. Uh, like it or not, want it or not, he's there because 
He is with you. And he's your companion. And he's your friend. And he's your savior. And he's all those things. But he's there in your good moments, in your bad moments. He's there in your successes. He's there in your failures. I think a lot of times, especially right now, with all the things that are happening at once in our midst, in our world, in the heat of those moments, a lot of us tend to forget that Jesus is still standing there. I mean, we must forget. Otherwise, we might not make some of the other things that we make. You know, we make enemies. We make grudges. We make judgments. We make separation. We make division. We make prejudice. We make violence. Sometimes we think, you know, the hardest word in Lutheran theology is go, because we're always afraid to go and share our faith and share the story because it, it's tied to this word evangelize, which is such a scary word. But evangelize is really nothing more than loving your neighbor in, in humble service. And the fact is, whether you want to or not, Phase two, phase three, phase four is coming. You will go inevitably somewhere. Um, and wherever you go, you represent Christ. You represent the church. You represent your family. You represent your congregation. You represent your God. And you know, whether that is to go to the store or whether it is to go to a protest. Go is the easy verb. Remember, that's the challenge. But remember also what we learned last week. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to guide you into every step that you take. The Holy Spirit is also with you in you, guiding you. And if you can remember that that's there, think about it. That kind of unstoppable, immutable, loving, reconciling force in, with, and under you, uh, wherever you go this week, just imagine the great things that you can make. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
crucified, and died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. God of community, you form us as your church. Guide our bishops, pastors, deacons, and all the baptized in sharing your life-giving good news with the whole world. Strengthen us to be bold in our proclamation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, you call everything into being. Sustain this world with your renewing care. Inspire us to see waterways, plant life, birds, fish, insects, and mammals, and call them good. Help us to celebrate new life throughout your creation, especially for Maverick Azaria Kunrat, born May 29th, Vinny and Al Kunrat's great-grandchild. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of counsel, all authority belongs to you. Encourage the leaders of this and every land to seek peace, equality, and unity among all, and let us see that we are all brothers and sisters. Install wisdom in advocates who work towards justice in often ignored communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of strength, protect all our frontline workers, first responders, medical providers, firefighters, military police, and all essential workers whose services we honor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of care, you cr created us in your image. Help us see your likeness in one another. Open our eyes to see and attend to all who face oppression and suffering. Console, heal, and nourish all in need, especially Marjorie Pelton, Melinda Carter, and her sister, and all those who are hospitalized, especially Tim Connells, Tim Connors, Jerry Sugre, Teresa, Cheryl, Gideon, Michael Milo, Nick, Jay, Marjorie, and all those whose names we lift up to you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of companionship, you accompany this body of faith. As the rhythms of summer begin, protect all who travel, renew all who will enjoy a time of Sabbath. We thank you for the ability to do virtual church in this time of COVID-19 virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, you comfort us in our grief with the promise of the resurrection. We give you thanks for the saints of all time and in our lives, especially Helen Beard, aunt of Bruce Beard. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Take a moment at home to share the peace with somebody in your household. Send them a text, give them a phone call, let them know that God loves them and that the Holy Spirit is working through them and that they're all equal parts of God's creation. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us now pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now one more prayer before we go. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you sent light to conquer all darkness, and you sent bread of heaven to nourish all your people. Send us forth this day with the healing power of the gift of faith and the Spirit and our very life, that we may serve you more fully by loving our neighbors more deeply. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 
And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon each one of you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. raised up for the world. Go in peace, share the good news, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for being with us this week and we hope to see you next Sunday.